So some time ago, I created a personal website using Create React app, but it was limiting me in some cases. And I decided to port this whole website to Next.js. And now that it's done, and I've published a blog post about my experience, let me also make a YouTube video. So when porting from Create React app to something more advanced, I had two options basically. I had Gatsby and I had Next.js in mind. I decided to go with Next.js because like the Gatsby starter stuff looked slightly complicated due to GraphQL and I played around with Next.js a little bit and it was just pretty much as easy as copying and pasting most of your components and most of your data and it just worked out of the box. And the structure was very similar to my Create React app implementation of my website. Okay, so I have this personal website. It has an about me section. It lists all of my projects, my skills, and it lists some of my blog posts here. You can click into one of these blog posts to read more. At the bottom, there's a social media bar here, and it lists some of my YouTube videos if you want to learn more about how this website is made. The website itself is pretty basic. Um, the blog itself, let's go into the blog. The blog itself is pretty basic as well. It's something like a markdown file with images and custom code component as you can see here it has a dark mode toggle and i built all of these things in create react app but create react app was limiting me in some cases so when i was using create react app i had to pretty much implement all the advanced features myself like server-side rendering for example yes create react app that doesn't have server-side rendering but there was this tool called react snap which basically crawls through your website as it is building your website and it generates static HTML representations of the render results of your Create React application. While this solution just worked fine, it wasn't the cleanest solution. Let me just show you the setup for that one. To use React Snap, you have to, first of all, modify your package.json file. You have to add this post build step in here and also this dependency obviously. After you've done that, you have to modify your index.js file and change some of these things here. Well, the setup itself for React Snap is actually pretty easy and it doesn't require you to do many things. But then again, this is another dependency that you have to add to your project and it increases your build time linearly as you go through and add more pages. So if Next.js comes with this out of the box and I don't have to configure it myself, I will obviously go with the Next.js approach. Okay, so that was my first reason why I want to go with Next.js. Like it comes with React Helmet out of the box as well, so you don't have to create custom solutions like I did with Meta Decorator. There's a YouTube video that I made about that. So I created a custom component here called Meta Decorator so that I can get Meta Previews on my React Snap generated HTML files. And Meta Previews look like these if you're wondering. Basically, when you send the link to someone over WhatsApp, Slack, or share it on a social media platform, it shows a preview of your website. And I built that solution for my Create React app website myself using React Helmet and React Snap. But Next.js comes with those things out of the box so you don't have to configure it yourself. That's pretty much it. And also, yeah, it's not that many lines of code as I showed you React Snap is pretty easy to set up but at the same time it's something that you have to manage yourself and it's just extra hassle. Anyway let's move on to the second point about why I chose Next.js. So with Next.js I don't have to use React Router which I had to use with my Create React app project. So let's go to index.js in here. As you can see I have to provide the name of the component that my React app has to render at every single one of the links that the user visit. And also if you want to have lazy loading, like if you want to defer the loading of the components until the user navigates to those pages like 404 or the CV component, for example, to reduce the download size of your website, you have to use this suspense thing. And Next.js also does all of those things automatically. The way that these things work in Next.js is you basically create a folder structure under pages and then index.js is basically your home page. If you want to create a new route such as abc.com slash blog, you just create a new page in here. And if you create index.js, this is the page that will get rendered if you go to, let's say, let's go to my website. So if you go here and then just type blog, this is the website that gets rendered. Index.js is the website that gets rendered or the page that gets rendered. 
So you don't need to worry about a separate configuration file like this one. You just create the folder structure like that and Next.js takes care of those things automatically. So you can get rid of React Router altogether as well. So that's one less dependency to manage basically. When it comes to adding meta tags to blog posts, Next.js comes with some very good examples that use a library called Gray Matter, which, which I will talk about in a second. Previously, when I wrote blog posts, I used to generate meta previews using the meta decorator and I had to embed all of the information into my blog post in here. So this is my image alt for the meta tag, for example. This is the description that shows up and this is the page title. And also this is the image that shows up when I send the link to someone, basically this. But Next.js comes with a library called Gray Matter. I probably could have used that library in my Create React app implementation as well. But Next.js comes with lots of examples and lots of like blog starter templates. And this one basically shows you how to set up a blog and also how to manage meta previews as well. Let me show you an example post. At the top of your markdown files, instead of having this custom blog meta decorator thing that I've created, you can have some structure like this, which has the title, has the description, cover image, date author if you want that kind of thing and also the image that you want to share in your meta preview so let me show you how this looks like on my current blog let's open the same blog post so i have title post in here and the description dates free time i've customized this to my liking i've added some new parameters and deleted the ones that i didn't need so it, this makes it really easy to manage well the way you manage these things is in the get static props function in here so you can import all of those things and then you can do what you want with them or like you can pretty much do what you want with all of those th things when you are rendering the page itself so all of those things get collected under a single object in here that gets passed into your component that gets drawn in here so you can extract title description cover image cover alt which are parameters in here so page post cover image cover alt those things are there for you to use so this means i can get rid of the blog meta decorator code that i've written as well let me show you that one too So I can pretty much get rid of this component if I chose to use Next.js, which is again, great, less code to maintain. So this is the gray matter library that I've mentioned. Um, and also Next.js has a lot of starter templates as well. So if you're wondering how to build some other thing, perhaps you can go here and then um, there are lots of examples for lots of different projects. And I'm pretty sure you can find what you're looking for in here. It's a very, very, very long list of projects. So it turns out you can use this gray matter library to extract your blog post names and also the titles, the descriptions way more easily than maintaining a separate file called blog.json, which is what I did with the previous implementation. So previously to show blog showcase cards on my homepage, let me show what those things are. So previously to, to draw these cards in here and also to draw the blog page itself, this one, I maintained a separate JSON file, which had the titles, the dates, uh, minutes to read and the subtitle that gets shown in here and also the blog post file name itself which refers to the markdown file that I have under my blog folder in here. So with Gray Matter and Next.js this becomes completely unnecessary. I, I can basically get rid of this file and if I want to add a new blog post all I need to do is to add it under the posts folder in here with the correct parameters populated at the top using Gray Matter. So Basically, adding a new blog post is as easy as adding a single markdown file. And when you do a deployment, all of these files will get automatically picked up. And using Gray Matter, my website will populate all the blog showcase cards and also the blog page itself using the get static props function. So let me show you how that looks like on index.js. So to render the blog showcase cards, I need title description, day three time, and that's pretty much it. But anyway, so all of that information is provided by Gray Matter using get static props function. And as you can see, they're all shown in here. Let's move on to the next item, dependencies, cache config, and overall less maintenance requirement. All right, let me show you the package.json file for the Next.js website. So it has this many dependencies and this many dev dependencies. That's not a lot and that's a fine amount for a personal website in my opinion. Let me show you what it looks like for the Create React app version. As you can see, it has a lot of dependencies in here. All right, so I managed to get rid of React Snap and a few of these other dependencies in here. I don't need some of these things. Um, I don't need this browser list thing down here. So yeah, basically Next.js is package.json file has less dependencies, which means you are gonna be spending less time managing or upgrading these dependencies later down the line. Okay, so 
cache config and overall less maintenance requirement. Let's talk about the cache config stuff. Let's go to my previous website. So I was using Firebase for my deployments on my Create React app version. So in this file, you can control web your website's cache policy. You can say, hey, I want to cache these files. And also I would like them to live this long on the cache before you invalidate them. So Vercel does this automatically. I'm not sure if you can set all of these things. There is probably a way, but what I've noticed is uh, when I refresh my website, all of the things are cached and doesn't download them automatically. So I didn't need to do this for my Vercel deployments. Oh yeah, I should talk about Vercel at this point. So previously I used Firebase for deployments and now I'm using something called Vercel and Vercel is made by the developers of Next.js. It's the platform of deployment for Next.js applications. You can deploy Next.js applications elsewhere, but that's pretty much the base platform for Next.js applications right now. Anyway. Hosting. Hosting an XS website is really, really easy if you're using Vercel. Let's go to my Vercel account in here. Let me just log in. Okay, um, I've, I've just logged in and this is my Vercel dashboard. Creating a new project with Vercel is really easy. It's much, much, much easier than configuring some Firebase stuff or creating a new React application using Create React App. So let's go into my personal website. You can configure different things in here. You can add domains to your project if you wanted to. But the best thing that Vercel provides for me is automatic deployments. So whenever I make some changes and then do a git push from here in a terminal instance. So if I just did git push in here after some of my changes, Vercel would pick up that change automatically and deploy that without me requiring to do any manual deployments. As soon as I do a git push, it just builds the website, it creates a static build of the website, and it just deploys that. And I found that to be way easier than Firebase. Previously, I created a deployment script in here, deploy.sh. So let's, let me show you. It's not difficult, but you just build a website and you use Firebase deploy to push it. But at the same time, this is a manual step that you have to do after you do a git push. So I did a git push and then I did yarn build Firebase deploy, which is not that many extra steps. But then again, if you can avoid those and focus on building your personal website, then that's a pretty big win in my opinion. Let me talk about the next item, total download size. Okay, so this is where things get slightly more controversial depending on your use case. Vercel doesn't have gzip nor broadly compressions on many widely used MIME types such as JPEG and MP4, which means my blog post pages got larger to download compared to my Firebase hosting because Firebase applies broadly compression on everything by default. However, to compensate this, the Vercel team has decided to come up with something called Next Image, which automatically optimizes your images on the fly. But at the same time, this degrades image quality slightly and lowers the resolution. But again, it does it automatically out of the box. So what this component does is it grabs the device size, like the screen size of the device, and it generates slightly different sizes of the images at build time. And when it grabs the screen size of the window size of the device, it returns back with the most optimal version of that image file, which means the download size will be less and the website is going to perform faster. Again, if this is something that you want, then go with Vercel and Next.js and it helps a lot. I haven't explored what the next image component can do properly yet, but I'm planning to do that in one of my next streams. All right, let's talk about performance. Well, this is a personal website and it doesn't serve a lot of people. Performance isn't a big concern in here. It was already very fast and the Next.js implementation didn't take away or bring anything else really. I haven't noticed any slowdowns or performance improvements in deployment or development either. So again, if you have a personal website, then Next.js isn't going to improve it that much because how big a personal website can get. Only thing that I've noticed is cumulative layout shift in here used to be pretty big in my Create React app blog posts, but Next.js somehow fixed it. And I'm assuming that's because I was loading these images lazily. Like as you can see on the first screenshot, there's a spinner being shown here. It's probably too small. I have to zoom in a lot. Yeah. The Previously I had a spinner, but I got rid of the spinner because Next.js loads these blog posts pretty much instantly. You don't need a spinner. As soon as the markdown file loading is done, it just shows everything as is. There's no need for a spinner in the Next.js version. What's next? I'm planning to do more programming streams on Next.js. Um, I'm planning to modify this website a lot more and I'm planning to use Next Image Component as an improvement. 
to reduce the download size on my blog post and I'm sure there are a lot of things Next.js provides but I haven't explored all of them yet so basically the plan from now on is to keep modifying the personal website keep updating it and discover more Next.js features along the way that's pretty much it for this one basically I have been busy porting this website to Next.js over the last few months and I didn't really create any new content because like, it wasn't really fun it was just copying and pasting one component from the create react app implementation into the next.js implementation and that was pretty much it except using the get static props function to render blog posts and also getting rid of react router and some of the dependencies but it's been it's been easy uh, i i think i spent around 15 to 20 hours max porting this from create react app to next.js didn't have that much that many issues and the code got overall much cleaner we'll see where it goes from here but i'm planning some major design changes as well and yeah let's see how all of those things go that's pretty much it for this stream and yeah i'll see you all later